instructional part of the video, you can get tabs and backing tracks if you go to my website, www.erichaugenguitar.com. For information about the sound tools I'm using today, go ahead and click on the description box underneath your, uh, in your YouTube player. And uh, for access to other exclusive content, you can find me on patreon.com slash erichaugenguitar. Now let's learn this thing. This is a basic, you know, great Bob Dylan song. And, uh, well, let's look at what we're starting with. Gilly is going to be over there doing a G, a C over G, and a G. So first things first, if you do your G this way, I would recommend to switch it around to use your fingers thusly. And then, side note, a lot of us guitar players in the roots, alt, whatever you want to call us, hipster something something, will not use this B note, so we'll leave him free, so that makes it really easy to... Put that C over G in there. Upon which Dave, well, on the, on the live version that, that I transcribed this from, he really just goes... Just zeros, but... I couldn't make that sound as cool, so I did it my own little variant. I'm taking a G structure up here, 0, 8, 7, and I might pull that 7th um, fret, that B note, off to get a 0, and then maybe resolve it either to opens or there. That's how I open it up, and now let's look what Dave does. his first lick and that's so neat because this is really if this is a G there's brown eyed girl he's getting some harmonized sixes there so seven on the B seven on the high E there am I in tune yeah just kind of playing around with those Which is neat because that's going, well, it's going against a C chord, so on the G it sounds nice, because where's our G? And it's neat, you get a neat kind of thing there on that C. I hope I'm not crushing this microphone, hold on. There we go. And then he gets that little fifth fret there, which is, isn't that, isn't that close encounters? But yeah, that is, you know, if this is G, there's the second of the key, the third of the key. Classic thing to do. And then, knowing Dave, he's going to hit zero and that eight together. To get to his next chord. So that part, uh, zero, and that's just G's, you know, G's ringing out. Back that G note down to a 7th fret, making an F sharp. Yeah, that's a very, and that's how you know it's Dave Rawlings, because it crosses into that kind of friction, dissonance kind of thing. Zero, seven, zero, and then together, drop it back, and then he visualizes the C and does this thing. So that thing, you know, there's a C chord, so he's, he's aiming for it. One, one on the B, zero on the G. Bring that two in, that A tone. Let that E in. And this time when he comes back, he's going to stretch it and get a fourth fret note of B to get his, again, very Dave Rawlings thing to let those notes bump into each other like that. Back to the other structure, and then back to what is, you know, part of a G. Then what happens? Um, oh yeah, um, more Gs, yeah, he slides into the fifth fret there of the D string and the open G there, hits a, a G up top to drone it. 
then the song's gonna get towards a D chord, so it goes. So yeah, again, just playing around with his dissonance. Fifth fret on that A string, gonna walk down to the third fret. Yeah, let those bump together, who cares? That's D7 kind of thing. O, 3, and 5. And then he's going to turn it into a D9. O, 5, 5. And he loves to do stuff like this. Yeah, that's a chromatic. You know, here's D7. He's back a fret. 6, 4, 6. Until he lets it in there, yeah. So. Oh, forgot about that fourth fret note. kind of getting back to a G to that little thing there so there's again our open G another G there our eighth fret five and seven that's the two and three of the key yeah that's a very Nashville thing to do and then he's this is yeah he loves to do this stuff Kind of moving up with the idea, he's like, can I go? So he moves up to 12, and up on that top string, 10, 8. It's still just other parts of the, is that major pentatonic? Nope, that's full on major. Drone it, drone it, drone it. So you get 12, 10, 8. And then I cop the melody, so this is not what he does. So yeah, just watch that upper note there and watch my strumming. That's what Gilly is singing, O and 3. And I might do a little, little 3 2 oh there, kind of a gospel. Comes back around. I change it. Because it hangs for longer. So you do that one, then take him off but leave index finger on there, on that C tone. Then this is a rolling spill that I heard him do. So that's just walking down three, two, oh, three, walking down a G major scale, but with a G drone. Then a C chord. So this is a C. And then I'm going to let go of the bottom half so I can get get that F sharp there, that second fret note, O3-3, because that's their vocal harmony. Get that F sharp again, get that C again, which is just part of it. And then I'm going to slide into 4 and 3 there, that's you know, just another part of a G chord, there's a G, so that part. Let it hang. Then I did a little walk, which is really just what Gilly does. Two, three, oh. Um, and then what's next? Oh, yeah. So, zeros. Billy, they don't like you to be so free. So, here's a D chord, two and three, just not the pretty note. Billy. You're gonna get that fourth fret that B there, so I'm gonna slide it forward. They don't like you. That's the harmony there, down to a two and a one, and then zero. That little phrase, Billy. They don't like you to be so free. Boom. And here we go into Dave's solo. Okay, starts with actually an E minor shape, but that makes sense to me because here's G. That's a G major pentatonic area, and you just, you know, he's, it's a jazzy thing to do to kind of go up from an E, making it kind of a G, a G6 chord. And again, always with drones going whenever possible. 
So that is nine, eight, seven. Nine, eight, seven? Oh, it's one, eight, seven on the cops. Okay, yeah, nine, eight, seven to a 10 there. And it is swept with that G drone. And he does kind of hit up at the, I think the end of four it goes. kind of goes back down, so that lick. Lands on a zero and an eight there. G's, slide. Slide that seven of the G up to a nine. Yep. I think he gets that in. I think he gets a, a, a six tuplet in, but I don't. So yeah, it's still just a G. There's another structure of G, caged. So that is nine, seven. Pinky's gonna get the 10. Get that 10, that G tone, and then I think he goes. He gets that one. His hands are bigger than mine. That makes sense. And then he's gonna just go up this G structure here just using drones. Five and zero, four and zero. Good way to test the tuning of your guitar. And then he does like quarter note triplets here. And then a little walk up. And yeah, it's okay if you hit, he'll hit that sometimes. So that's, again, see this G chord here? Four, five, three, three. back down and this is the best lick in it that I would recommend practicing for a day that's one of those crossovers so let's look at the first half again off of this G there's the first part slide into that third fret note three three slide into that seven and back down and when you come back down, you get a five, and you hammer on to that uh, three to four. Very, uh, you know, that's just gospel, blues, bluegrass. That's all purpose. Drone it out at five and zero. So, and here we go. Five, zero, five. Again, he loves to do that four and zero. Crunch, three get that four there. What that is, that's a turning that G into a G7, which is music theory time. That's a secondary dominant chord. Very cool gospel old time thing to do to set up the C chord. That's why it goes. You get a great contrary motion there. So yeah, the, the three and four spread apart to become two and five, and here we go. Droning on those Gs, three, 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 five, and then we're gonna go up from this G here. Let's see, I gotta do the whole thing. Yeah, eight, eight, 10, 10, 12. He's got to stay on that 12 there. Again, playing around with major scale. Uh, what is that? He does an 8, 12, 0, 12, 13, 10, 12. Yeah. 0, 15, 0, 15. Yeah, that lick. Hold on. Now here's a D chord here. If we think back to Bob Dylan's, you know, that's a blues lick. That everybody must get stone. That's what he's doing. He's coming from there. A chromatic approach to a D7 for, you know, that, well, let's just aim there, which is, it's just that, but an octave higher. 14, 13, 14. Walk it back. Chromatically, fret, fret, fret. There's a D chord. It's not that crazy. You're gonna hammer on 
that 10 to 11, leaving that flat. And he does that same little contrary motion walk down. Uh, where am I? Oh yeah, there was a little thing. Check this 12. And that last part, there's still the D. Walk that 12 of the D string down to a 10. Leave that 11 there, contrary motion. That's G. That's a G. And he might play around with it. He goes. And then you just go around again. Okay, so I think the main takeaway is there's like this really cool lick here, the. That's worth it. I think the other thing that I think is particularly interesting in this solo is the way. All that kind of G droney stuff, I think, merits further investigation. Um, those are two coolest things of this. Um, other than that, take your time with it, have fun with it, and thanks for watching. <laughs>